first of all, to come up with reflection, there must be a source which provides light. Secondly, there must be a surface. The surface is that which reflects light back. There is a particular thing known as the object and image. And obviously the light which we show is the ray or it indicates the direction of flow of light. Now what are they? Say for example, this is a surface. Surface is something which reflects the light back. So, which means that obviously there must be a source which actually is providing the light. Say for example, this is the light which is coming over here. Right? Now, first of all, we will understand about the laws of reflection with the help of this. Then only it will be very much clear to understand about the regular and the irregular reflection. Right? So, if this light is coming from a source, obviously, the ray will be like this. The arrow pointing, it shows that the light is coming like this. Right? Whenever a ray will show us that it is coming from the source to the surface. From source to surface. At that point of time, we will term that particular ray as incident ray. While on the other hand, if we see something that which is going from the surface to any other location, we will term that particular ray as The reflected ray. So obviously this ray is coming towards the surface from the source which means that this is an incident ray. Right? Now, the point where actually this incident ray is hitting the surface at that particular point if we draw an imaginary line which is obviously normal to this surface this shall look like this so this black dotted line is a line which is perpendicular or normal to the surface right this particular black line is known as normal This normal is line perpendicular to surface where, where this ray, the incident ray is in the surface. So obviously if we observe very carefully we shall see that there is a particular angle which is denoted by small i. This small i is known as the angle of incidence 
which obviously we can define the angle of incidence as the angle which the incident ray makes with the norm. Right? Now, after hitting the surface, obviously the surface will reflect it back. As I told earlier, that the light will hit this paint and then the paint will reflect that back. Right? So, the reflected ray shall look like this. Obviously, the reflected ray comes out from the surface and goes anyway. So, the ray indication of the arrow of this ray will be like this. Right? Now, obviously, again, if we see, we will see that, yes, this reflected ray is making an angle with the normal known as small r. Then we can say that this reflected ray is making an angle of reflection known as r, which we can define as the angle of reflection is the angle which the reflected ray makes with the normal. Now, as we have seen that what is the normal, what is incident ray, what is a reflected ray, now we shall be trying to look into that what is known as the regular reflection and what is the regular reflection. So, for example, we keep two kinds of surfaces. The first one over here is the smooth surface, while the other one over here kept is the rough surface, right? Now, if say for example, the beams of light incident on the smooth surfaces are like this, and say they are parallel, the incident rays are parallel, Then the reflected ray on a smooth surface, it shall go parallel once again. So this kind of reflection which occurs is known as regular reflection. Whereas on the other hand, if we incident a beam of light, the incident rays are basically parallel to each other, but we shall observe that the reflected ray, which obviously are straight, because we know that light travels in a straight path, it may be possible that these reflected rays are not parallel to each other. Right? Now, this is simply because of that the normal drawn at these three points over here, they are not parallel to each other because see, when it is hitting over here, the normal shall lie perpendicular to the point of contact of the surface and the incident ray. So it will remain something like this. Whereas on the other hand, over in this location, at this point, the normal shall lie straight like this. Right? Now, based on this regular and irregular reflection, we have some laws of reflection, or to be precise, we could say those as laws of reflection for smooth surfaces, because Whatever our study will be for the case of reflection, it will be confined to the cases of regular reflection for smooth surfaces, right? So let us try to understand the laws of regular reflection. The laws of regular reflection, the first point it could be stated as the incident ray, the reflected ray, and the normal all lie on 
same plane. Right? So we can understand that the incident ray, these are the incident rays and these are the reflected rays. Likewise, incident rays and the reflected rays. Now it is saying that the incident ray, the normal and the reflected ray all lie on the same plane. Which means that if this is, say for example, the surface, the incident ray is coming like this. The reflected ray is going. So this is the incident ray and this is the reflected ray and obviously there shall be a normal which will be perpendicular to this plane or say for example this surface it is saying that this incident ray, this reflected ray and this normal they all lie in the same plane the second is that while we have seen that this one will be the angle of incidence and this one will be the angle of reflection because the angle which the normal makes with the incident ray is the angle of incidence and the angle which the reflected ray makes with the normal is known as the angle of reflection. So we can state that the second law is being stated as the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. So, from now onwards, whenever we shall be studying about reflection on a smooth surface, obviously we shall be taking the incidence angle or the angle of incidence as I and also the angle of reflection as equal to I because we could see over here that in the law it is stated that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Right? Now, Say for example, let us look into the concept of image. Say this one is a mirror, a plain mirror, which obviously this hashed region, it means that this is silver from on this side, whereas on the other side this is the smooth reflecting surface. The mirrors are actually silvered so as not to allow the lights which are incident on it to actually penetrate this and go on this side, right? We shall obviously be saying those concepts where the light can penetrate a surface in the chapter of refraction but not now. So over here, say for example, we do keep a point object over here. So this one is actually really the object. And a light is being coming from this point object likewise. And after it is incident, it will get reflected. Right? Obviously, this will be the normal, this is the incident ray, this is the reflected ray and the normal. So if we try to extend this line over in this region, obviously we can do it. And let us draw a line from this point which is parallel to the normal. Right? Now over here it may be noted that if say for example this one is the angle of incidence, this particular angle will also be the angle of incidence. Because as we could have seen that the angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, if you closely observe that this line is basically parallel to this, 
Let us give the word ISIS a name such as O A P and say this point at this junction as point B. Now, since these two lines are parallel to each other, then obviously this angle will be equal to this angle. Why? Because they are corresponding angles. Again, since both these lines are parallel to each other, this angle will again be equal to this angle because they are alternate angles. Right? And we can state this as angle PAO is equal to angle PBO is equal to I. First one. The second one is that we could see that the angle APO, which obviously is 90 degree because this line is parallel to the normal, so this will be 90 degree or pi by 2, so this angle will also be pi by 2, or means right angle. So we can say that angle APO is equal to angle BPO which is a right angle right and the third important thing is that observe that this OP line is common to both the triangles APO and BPO so OP is common so, since it is angle side angle, we can easily say that these two triangles APO and BPO, they are congruent to each other. And obviously, if they are congruent to each other, we can state that the side AP, the length of the side AP is simply equal to the length of the side BP. Now, if so, for example, a person who sees from this location, he or she will see as if the light is coming from at this point. It will seem to him that the light is coming from this location. Right? Now, in that scenario, he will be seeing this object at A as the object now in B. But is this the real case? No, this is obviously not real. Because this is not the object. The object is at location A. Then we may say that over here, the point B is basically the image, whereas the point A is basically the object. So we can see a very important conclusion from this that the distance of the object from a plane mirror will simply be equal to the distance of the image of that same object from the plane mirror but on the other side because A P is equal to B P first of all. The second important deduction what we can see is that this object and this image both lie on the same line which obviously is parallel to the normal. Right? Now, have you ever thought of that why actually the ambulance is written from right to left? Why not from left to right? This is based on this basic principle. Say for example, let us keep a mirror like this and we do write the letters as is written on ambulance. Say for example, from time A, we do check it as something like this, this and this, which is obviously the reverse of R, 
E and D. So on the other side, we shall be saying that say, this point is located very near. So this point will be near over here as well. And likewise, the entire curvature will be made. So this will look like a real D. Now for this also, it will look like E and over here as R. So, if I'm driving a car, obviously I will be wearing the things which are behind me with the help of the rear view mirror. So, which obviously, if the ambulance is being written in from left, from right to left, obviously I shall see the reflection of this ambulance on my play, on my mirror, or for example, of a driving car, I will see it just as from written from left to right. Right? Now, say for example, over here, we could see that this is the reflected ray and we have taken it over in this direction. Now, let us extend this incident ray. If we extend this incident ray on this direction, we shall be seeing that the angle of difference between the reflected ray and the original incident ray which was coming like this as angle D. So this D is known as the angle of divergence. Angle of divergence or simply we do write it as capital D will be equal to C. This line, if it is extended over here, obviously this will be a straight line, which means that the angle is pi over here, or 180 degrees. Now, so the angle of deviation will be equal to pi minus i minus i from geometry. We can write it as pi minus 2i. Right? Now, say for example, we are keeping this incident ray likewise, but now in this case we are actually tilting or rotating the mirror. We are rotating the plane mirror. So we want to understand that for a certain amount of change, in the angle while rotating a plane mirror, say for example an angle of pi, what will be the change or the amount of change of this reflected ray or how much by how much angle will it change, right? It has been explained you find out that if mirror rotated by an angle of say phi then the angle of divergence that is capital D will be equal to phi minus 2 of this incidence angle plus the angle through which the mirror is being rotated i plus phi right so this will simply give us the value of phi minus 2i minus 2 phi say for example initially this was d and this is the new d which we are looking for the new angle of divergence right so this specific term will simply be equal to pi minus 2i which was the previous case when the mirror was not rotated by an angle of phi then we can write it as equal to 
b minus 2 phi right and b was actually the angle which was inscribed between these two say for example this incidentally and this refract reflected a now if the new angle of divergence is equal to b minus 2 phi which obviously means that this reflected ray is now if say for example previously the reflected ray was like this now it will turn by an angle of 2 phi to the original reflected ray right so we can state that the reflected ray R rotates by 2 phi so we can again conclude that if a mirror is being rotated by an angle of phi the reflected ray will rotate from its initial position twice the time of the angle by which the mirror is rotated right now let us come to the concept of inclined mirrors say for example after the time now we were taking for only one mirror right now let us check two mirrors say for example this one is a mirror and this another one is a mirror their reflecting surfaces are being shown by the hashed lines now say for example we do keep a point or say for example an object likewise so from this we can understand that the image of this object will lie like this so this will be say for over here this will be the image for this mirror secondly we can see that for this mirror also the image will be made like this now due to inclined mirrors what happens is that the images that are actually being formed inside on the say for example on the other side of the mirror they also reflect right say for example if this mirror was not over here and an object would have been over here then obviously if this mirror was like this straight the image for this point will be over here right say for example at this particular point where this is equal to this distance obviously from this we could understand so over here this will be the object this will be the image and this particular image form will be the image of this another image so in this function it will act as if this image is its object and thus the image will be formed likewise this one will also be the image and there will be another image which will be formed right so we can see that due to the inclination of more than one mirror we could see a various image within if say for example there is a special case that if between these mirrors the angle of inclination is equal to pi by 2 then 
this image, say for example as A and this image as B, this A and B shall actually fall together, right? Now, it has been experimentally found out that for given angle of inclination between mirrors, if the angle of inclination angle of inclination between the mirror, if it is 2 pi by 2 to 2 pi by 3 then what will be the number of images that will be formed? Number of images that will be formed. The second will be, say for example, 2 pi by 3 to 2 pi by 4. The next one is that from 2 pi by 4 to 2 pi divided by n plus 1. The guys will experiment and found out that if the object actually remains like this between two mirrors and the angle of inclination between the two mirrors is from 2 pi by 4 to 2 pi 2 divided by n plus 1 then the number of images that will be formed will simply be equal to n. Likewise, we can say for 2 pi by 3 to 2 pi by 4, the number of images formed, it is n and n plus 1, so over here if it is 4, this will simply be equal to 3. Likewise is the case for over in this region. So we could actually see that for what angle of inclination between the mirrors, how many images we shall be finding out. Now say for example, if they are actually, these two mirrors, if they are parallel to each other and we keep an object between them. Now could you actually tell that how many images will be formed? Obviously. The angle between them is 0 degrees, like this, right, because they are parallel to each other. So, the number of images that will be formed is infinite. But since light is lost due to the you know, course of reflection, obviously we do see a limited number of images, right? Now, if these two are over here parallel to each other, then the number of images we see is actually, say, infinite. Why is this so? It could be described best by if the angle of inclination between this, say for example, is 360 divided by n, where L is, say for example, take it as capital N, where L is the angle of inclination. So, this will be the angle of inclination. Say for example, we do take it like the angle of inclination is equal to 90 degrees. So, 360 degree divided by 90 degrees will give us actually 4. Now, it states that if this one found out is an even number, then the number of images that will be formed will simply be equal to 360 divided by capital N minus 1. Right? As we found out, the 360 divided by 90 will be equal to 4, which obviously is an even number, so we can say that the number of images that will be formed will be equal to 
3 is to divide by 90, that means 4. 4 minus 1 will be equal to 3. Now look over here. As I told that if this is actually 90 degrees, then the A and B, they will actually fall at the same place. So the number of images will be 1, 2, and the third over here. Right? But, If this number which is being found out is not even, but this is odd. So for example, if we keep the value of n or the angle of inclination as equal to 120 degrees, we will see that it will be equal to 360 degrees divided by 120 degrees will be equal to 3, which will obviously be the odd number. In that circumstances, again, two things arise. Whether this object which is kept is kept symmetrically between these two or not. Say for example over here, if we find that the distance from this medium to this location is x, and over here also this is as x. So we can say that this object which has been kept, this lies symmetrically between the two mirrors. So, if this is kept symmetrically, or else if it is kept asymmetrically or not symmetrically. Right? In the case of symmetrically, we can again find out that the number of images will be formed will equal to 360 divided by n minus 1, as the case for even. But if it is kept asymmetrically, then obviously we shall find the number of images formed as will be equal to 360 gb divided by n degrees, the number of images will be formed. Now, as it was told before, that if we keep two mirrors, two plane mirrors, parallel to each other, then obviously we can keep this n or the angle of inclination as equal to zero. So something divided by zero will be an infinite number. It could be odd, it could be even, right? So ever if we go for this as well as in any of this, we will see that over there actually infinite number of images are formed, right? Thank you. Now, as we have understood the plane mirror, now let us try to see the other phase of it. What are the limitations? First of all, say for example, if there is a mirror kept like this and this is say the base of this mirror and there is a person who is standing in front of the mirror such that the base of this mirror and the base of the person are at the same level. Now it may be noted that this person is not standing straight like this but instead he has raised one of his hand such that the peak point is above than his eyesight level. Right? So this will be the scenario that say for example this is his eyesight level, this is the peak point of his hand and this is the ground level foot point. So he wished to find out that what would be the minimum length of the mirror or the minimum height of this plane mirror such that he could see the entire image right from his feet to the top point of his fingers which is above his eyesight. Now so for example, if it is being said that from eyesight to the uppermost level this is 
2 meter and his eyesight to the foot is say for example 4 meter. Now in this scenario closely observe that an incident ray from the stock will go and hit the mirror like this and obeying the laws of reflection it will go back like this such that the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection will be the same right but closely observe that this reflected ray is not passing through his eyesight and as we know that light travels in a straight line and we cannot see the objects which is at our back because the only fact is that the reflected ray does not meet our eye so until and unless any reflected ray which does not meet our eye we will not be able to see that right so this ray of light which is incident on the mirror and is reflected back the eye will not be able to see it but there will be a situation like this that this say for example this is an incident ray falling on this mirror and this incident ray is say coming back to the mirror coming back from the mirror like this so this too will be straight line like this was the scenario because light almost travels in a straight line now for this incident ray the reflected ray will actually meet his eye and he will be able to see the top portion of his finger at this point likewise there will be various other situations that this ray will go like this and when it gets reflected it will be reflected like this now is this reflected ray is actually meeting the eyesight no and if it does not then obviously he cannot see it so there will be a scenario that the incident ray actually reaches over here on the mirror and it gets reflected back to the eyesight so he can see this ray so now it is understood that any ray, any incident ray which is getting reflected from the mirror at a height higher than this point will not reach to the eye as well as any ray which is incident from this foot to this mirror which is below this point will not reach to the eye level right so this would basically be the minimum length required in order to view this person right now abiding by these laws of reflection and geometrical interpretations we can see that if this angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection then this particular from say from A to B this will simply be equals to B C which obviously means that A B will just be equal to 2 meter because the entire AC is 4 meter likewise we will also observe the same scenario on the upper portion we shall observe that 
CD is equal to DE, which obviously means that CG is equal to 1 meter because this total is 2 meter. Right? And this entire length or height of the meter is basically equal to BD. Right? And from this geometry, we can understand that BD is simply equal to BC plus CD. The length of CD is 1 meter, the length of BC is equal to AB is equal to 2 meter, which obviously means that this will be equal to 3 meter. So, we can say that for a person of 6 meter high, or for an object of 6 meter high, if you wish to see like this at any point, the minimum height of the meter that will be equal will be the half, that is the 3 meter, right? Now, just think of a scenario that you are driving a car, on a highway and obviously you would wish to see the cars which are coming from behind you in order to actually understand this we will try to keep a mirror in your car so as to avoid any kind of accident now say for example if the width of this highway is around say 20 meters then obviously the minimum length of the meter which you want to keep will be of 10 meter width the half right now your car width is say maximum of 4 meter wide which means that you are going to keep a mirror of much more greater width than your car itself Wow, that's a brilliant idea, but really that is not practically feasible. So we have to think of certain different things. Now what the certain different thing could be? Here comes the concept of the spherical meter. Now, how does the spherical mirror work? We will be able to understand it only if we be able to understand the terminologies which are associated with it. So, first of all, the spherical mirror will actually mean that there is a sphere. The first and foremost thing. The word spherical indicates that there is a sphere. Right? And if there is a sphere, then obviously there will be a center of that sphere. This particular center, C, is known as the center of curvature. So we can write it as that C is equal to center of curvature. Now, so for example, we are going to take out a particular piece from this sphere. Say for example like this. We are going to take this out. Now if we are going to take this out and if we are trying to view it from say the side view, then this particular thing will actually seem like this. There will be a curve. This portion has been magnified now, right? Now, there are particularly two things, as we have seen in the plane meter, that we were actually silvering one of its side, such that the other side then will start acting like a reflecting surface. So likewise, if ever we confront a situation like the bulging part, this portion is bulging outwards, which means this is the bulging part, whereas this is not the bulging part. So if we see ever that the bulging part is silver.
which obviously means that the outer side will now be the reflecting surface. Now, this kind of spherical mirror where the bulging part is being silvered such that the other part is the reflecting surface, we will tell this kind of mirrors as concave mirrors. Whereas if we see that the bulging part now is not silvered, which of part is not silvered, but instead it is acting the reflecting surface, which means that now this side is silvered. So if the bulging part acts as the reflecting surface, Then we use to tell this kind of mirrors as convex mirrors. Right? Now, this is the concept of a concave and a convex mirror. Let us try to find out some other terminologies which are associated with it. Now, as we could see, that every part of this which has been broken out will be having this center of curvature, right? So, if we want to view it on a broader scale, we shall be seeing this likewise. Say, for example, we take it, the case, on the situation of a concave mirror, which means this will be the reflecting part. Now, there will be the center of curvature somewhere over here. This will be the see the center of curvature. Right? Now, if say for example, we draw a line which is meeting the center of curvature and this mirror. Say for example, this line we have drawn which is passing through the center of curvature to the middle, right? This particular line will be known as the principal axis. So this green line is known as principal axis. And the principal axis where it actually meets with the mirror is known as its pole. So this particular point is known as the pole, right? Now, there is a very important concept to understand that if this is the center of curvature, then obviously this particular part from this center of curvature to the pole this will basically be the radius for this one, right? And always we know that radius always makes a normal to the surface. Say for example, if this is a very small piece which is drawn out, which obviously means that the aperture of this will be very small, it would not be gained too much. And if it is not bent too much, then obviously we can think of a situation that this will be the tangent at this particular point. And this tangent over here, this is the radius which is falling on it. So this will be making an angle of 90 degree or pi by 2. Now all of us during our subsequent lecture study, we shall be treating this aperture as a very small aperture. So as we can treat that, yes, this is not much bulge. If it is bulge too much, what will be the scenario? We will be discussing it later obviously, but not now. So we can see that from the center of curvature to the pole, the principal axis, it will actually act like a normal, right? So, say for example, now we can also draw a line 
like this from the center of curvature to anywhere on this one on this concave mirror at this particular point we shall be seeing that this one will be the tangent to this point this dashed lines and this one be as the radius so at this particular point this line will act like the normal to this point so if any ray which is coming over here like this say for example this is the incidence or the incident ray so the angle of incidence as we know this is the angle being made with the incident ray with the normal so this is now the normal this is the incident ray so this angle will be equal to the angle of incidence now abiding by the laws of reflection obviously a reflection shall happen over here such that This reflected ray will be making an angle of reflection with this given normal such that I is simply equal to R. Right? Now, let us find out, say for example, take a situation to understand it page here. This is a concave mirror. And say for example, this is the principal axis, this will be the cone. Say for example, this is the center of curvature. And if this is the center of curvature, then say let us extend this line. And we put an object like this. Now this is the object. And yes, if this is the object, then obviously a line, the incident ray shall fall like this, right? Such that this incident ray is parallel to the principal axis. In this situation, we shall be drawing the normal to this point like this and whatever the angle of incidence it will be making over here the same angle of reflection will occur and the reflected ray will look like this right So we can say that this angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Now, if this particular and this incident ray is parallel to the principal axis, the point on the principal axis which coincides with the reflected ray will be this particular point. Right? Because the reflected ray is actually meeting this principal axis on this point. This particular point is known as the focus. Or simply is denoted by capital M. Now what is the relation between this focus and the center of curvature? We shall be dealing with it later on. And we shall be trying to understand that why it is called focus afterwards while we will be studying about spherical aberration later in this topic. But the noteworthy point is that if a line or say if to precise if an incident ray is parallel to the principal axis then it gets reflected obeying the laws of reflection like this and the point at which it actually cuts this principal axis or it makes the principal axis that particular point is known as the focus 
But this point is not the focus. Why? Because this incident ray was not parallel to the principal axis. Right? So, now this is the scenario. Now, if we wish to find out that where will be the image of this thing formed, then obviously we have to check the help of the ray diagrams for concave as well as a convex mirror, which shall be carried out in the subsequent lectures, right? Thank you. Now, as we did see in the previous lecture that how the reflection actually occurs on, say, a spherical mirror, let it be a, like, concave or a convex, obeying the laws of reflection, now we shall try to understand the relation between C and F, as we have seen in the previous lecture, that C is the center of curvature of that particular medium and F is the focus of that medium, right? And also we would like to understand that how actually the images are formed. So first of all, if we do take an example that say, this one, as being a mirror, say a concave mirror like this. This is say, the principal axis. This particular point over here is the center of curvature, and say, for example, this point is the focus. But we know that what is the focus? That if a ray is passing or say for example an incident ray is passing and hitting this mirror as such that this incident ray is actually parallel to this principal axis then the reflected ray will touch this principal axis at this focus at this particular point. Right? So, right now, if we do take that this one is, say, an object which is being kept. Now, if this is the object, then obviously the incident ray, the one incident ray, we shall be drawing from its head as such that the incident ray will be parallel to the principal axis. So see for example, this incident ray is parallel to this print. So this incident ray is parallel to this principal axis. Now, there will be a normal at this point, which will actually mean that this is the radius. And if this is the radius, then obviously the normal shall pass through the center of curvature. So, it may be the scenario that this one is the normal. This dashed line is the normal, right? So whatever the angle of incidence it will be making, the same angle of reflection will be happening over here. So the reflected ray shall pass like this. Right? And this particular point where the reflected ray is meeting this principal axis will be known as the focus of this concave mirror. Why? Because this incident ray was parallel to the principal axis. And as we have said earlier in previous lecture, that what is the focus? Right? Now, let us say, for example, there is another line and another incident ray which is passing from its head, but it is actually passing through the center of curvature. Then, how shall it look like? Let us see. It will be something like this. If they say uh, the mirror is extended likewise, right? Then obviously this incident ray which is passing through the center of curvature 
will be denoted by this arrow. And the normal at this point will obviously lie on this incident ray itself. Now when you may ask me then what will be the reflected ray for this incident ray? Now it may be noted that if the normal and the incident ray both lies on the same line then it means that the angle of incidence is equal to zero. Which obviously means that obeying by the laws of say this reflection the reflected ray will also make an angle of zero degree with the normal. So which means that the angle of reflection will also be zero degrees. So this incident ray it will come like this and the reflected ray will also bounce back along the same line. Right? So, this will be the reflected ray. The incident ray and the reflected ray both trace the same line when they are passing through the center of curvature. Right? Now, an image is always formed at the junction of two, say, reflected rays of which the incident ray are actually coming from a single point. See, this red line and this red line, they are actually the incident rays which are coming from this single point, the head of this arrow. Their reflected ray is basically this particular ray which is passing through the focus and this one, this black arrow, this one. So, this reflected ray and this reflected ray, they are actually meeting at this point. And since this tail or the foot of this object is on the principal axis, so the foot of this object will also be on the principal axis. This is the reflected ray position for the head. So this particular junction will also form the head. Now closely observe that over here this was like this. It was standing upright. But due to this one, this is just the inverted. So if ever it happens like this scenario, we shall say that the image that is being formed is basically inverted. Right? So, in this case, we are saying that the image form is the inverted one. And the reflecting surface was actually along this side, this side, whereas the silver was on this side. So, if the image and the object both lies on the same side, we shall be saying that this is a real image which is formed. Right? A real image is that image which actually could be formed on a screen. If we actually bring a screen at this location, we shall be seeing this object. But an inverted one. Now when we shall be studying about the concave mirrors in full depth we shall be understanding that obviously there is a kind of magnification that is involved. Like we can see over here that this size is basically bigger than this size. Right? And if the size is actually reduced we will say that the image form is basically diminished. Either and if otherwise, if it is enlarged, we shall say that the image form is enlarged. But if the image was formed on this particular side, on the other side, and the image and the object were on the other side of so the mirror, then we will say that this is not a real but a virtual image. Right? And if it forms that if an image is not formed like inverted, if it is turning upright, we shall be saying that this is an upright image. Right? 
Now we shall be dealing into this concepts a little, a little bit later. But right now we would like to get our main focus on a concave mirror where obviously this will be the principal axis where this particle will be say the center of curvature and obviously if any day pass which on obviously an incident ray if it passes parallel to the principal axis and hits this mirror then it will happen as such that the normal at this particular point will basically be this particular dashed line. Obeying the laws, we may say that if this angle is equal to theta, the reflected ray will also make an angle which is known as the angle of reflection which again will be equal to the angle of incidence is equal to theta and as we know that this particular point is known as the focus and this particular point is known as the pole and let us say take this particular point named as M, the point where actually the incident ray is hitting the mirror. And obviously this is a case of a concave mirror where the silver part is the bulging part, right? Now looking at this thing, the first and foremost thing is that we have to consider that this mirror is of a very small aperture which obviously means that there is not much bulging on this side right and obviously if there is not more bulging on this side so this will be of a very small curvature right so of small aperture we will get a small curvature then obviously we can say that MP is basically perpendicular to CP or FP. If this aperture is less and if this curvature is less than only. So for the time being we take that angle of MPC is actually tending to be pi by 2. So we can say that this may be pi by 2 or a 90 degree if we actually do mention that this aperture is very less. Now if this is the scenario we can actually say that this particular line and this line they are parallel to each other so this angle will also be equal to this particular angle right so this will be basically equal to 2 theta because this angle is equal to theta plus theta that is 2 theta. Now from triangle CMP what we can get in triangle CMP C. CMP is a triangle where actually this angle is theta and this angle is basically 90 degrees. So we could find out this particular angle. But to find out this particular angle, we have to take the help of triangle CMF and triangle FMP. So in this triangle CMP, we have to basically look for triangle CMF and triangle FMP. Right? 
Now close we also that this angle plus angle MFC will be equal to 180 degree. So we can say that 2 theta plus angle of MFC is equal to 180 degrees or pi. Likewise, we may say that angle MCF, angle MCF plus angle CMF, CMF plus angle MFC, MFC is equal to 180 degrees because we all know that the sum of angles in a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. Now look over here, these two particular equations has got their right hand side equal, so we can equate them. And when we will equate them, we will find that this angle MFC and this angle MFC, they will get cancelled out, leaving only that this two is equal to 2 theta. So, we can say that angle of MCF plus angle of CMF. Now, what is the angle CMF? This is basically equal to theta. Is equals to 2 theta. Which obviously will give us the equation that angle of MCF is equals to theta itself. So we can understand that this particular angle will also be equal to theta. Now, in triangle CMP, CMP, obeying the laws of trigonometry, we can write that tangent of theta or tan theta simply will be equal to MP divided by PC. MP divided by PC. Now observe closely that if this aperture is very very low, then obviously this theta will also be very very low. And for small angles of theta, we can consider the tangent as equal to the angle itself. So we can write it as the theta is equal to MP divided by PC itself and let us give it as equation 1. Now going to the other triangle, triangle M and MPF. In triangle MPF, we can obviously see likewise the tangent of 2 theta will be equal to MP divided by PF. Tangent of 2 theta will be equal to MP divided by PF. Now again, if the 2 theta is very small, we can simply write it as that 2 theta will be equal to MP divided by PF. Now obviously in this equation, we can replace this theta with this equation 1. So we can write simply as 2 multiplied by MP divided by PC will simply be equal to MP divided by PF. Now observe that this MP, MP will be cancelling out only leaving behind that PC will be equal to 2 PF. Now what is PC? PC is the length from pole to C which means the distance of the center of curvature from the P. Obviously this is the radius which we denote it by C is equals to, so C is the distance or the distance of the C or the center of curvature from this pole is equal to 2 multiplied by what is PF? PF. This is basically the distance from
from the focus to the pole. And this is denoted by small f, where small f is called the focal length. Right? So, we can observe a very important equation over here as that the center of curvature will be equal to twice of the focal length. So, it will always, if we take any small aperture this kind of concave mirror, then if a ray is passing or an incident ray is passing parallel to this principal axis, then the reflected ray will be hitting at a point on the principal axis such that the twice of this focal length will be equal to this CP. So we can also say that this FP is equal to CF. Right? And the same equation also holds good for the convex mirror as well. Right? Now how is this? You can really try it out on your own that how will it be. But let me show you a simple hint that how actually reflection occurs in a convex mirror. Now say for example, we do take this one as a convex mirror of a very small aperture obviously and this one is the pole over here and this is the principal axis now we know that in a kind of this convex mirror the bulging part is basically the reflecting part so any object that will be over here will be reflected but if we are keeping any object over here it will not be reflected because this side is silvered so first of all let us keep a small object at any way on this principal axis now the question arises that where actually the center of curvature or the focal point or the focus shall lie obviously if this is a small aperture then try to think that how the sphere would have looked like the sphere would have looked like this so the center of curvature will be somewhere in the middle of the sphere so it will be over here and the focus of this will also be over here because we have said that this twice of the focus is equal to the center of curvature from the pole, right? So, if we wish to carry out a ray diagram, say this one is going, this is a ray which is parallel to this principal axis, right? It will actually be reflected like this. Now, why is it so? If this is, say, for example, the center of curvature over here at this point, then at this particular point, there must be a normal. If we draw a hashed line from over here, A dashed line, which will mean that this is normal to this point, and also if we take it on the other side, we shall be seeing that this line itself is a normal at this particular point. As such, that this angle of incidence is equal to the angle of reflection. Right? But if there is an observer, obviously he shall be searching over this side. It will seem to him that as if that the rays, this reflected ray is coming somewhere from inside this mirror. Right? And as light travels in a straight line, it will be seeming to him as if that this ray 
it is coming from like this right so this is the dashed line which has been made to indicate that it will seem to a viewer who is eye is over here it will seem to him as if that the ray is coming like this right now say for example if there is another ray which is being drawn see which passes through this center as if that if there was no mirror it would have passed through this point then the reflected ray will be completely going the opposite side right why because we can obviously draw the extension to this line as if that this is passing through the center so if there any way it comes like this if there was no mirror if it was coming over to the center then obviously this will be the normal itself and the reflected ray or the incident ray if it lies on the normal itself the reflected ray will also lie on the incident ray of the normal itself so this will be the normal or the reflected ray now anyone who is sitting over here it will seem to him as if that this reflected ray is coming from a source on the other side of the mirror from this point right and as we know that this point of convergence between these two reflected rays because this is a reflected ray this is another reflected ray if we want to bring them on the other side together they will meet at this point so it will seem to him that as if there is a small object which is at this location right so if we actually want to make a big diagram we could understand it likewise that this was the mirror now this is the principal axis this particular one say the center of curvature as c if obviously there was an object like this a ray passing parallel to this principal axis it will just go like this say this is not the center of curvature right now See, this center of curvature lies at a point somewhere near this so it will seem as if that this ray is coming along like this right and there will be another ray which obviously shall be passing through this center of curvature it will seem as if this will pass through the center of curvature if there was no mirror it would have passed through the center of curvature then it will just go on the opposite side so it will seem to a view on this part that as if the, the ray is coming like this and at the point of the congruence this particular thing an image will seem to him as if it is formed now also the image and the object were on the same side that is the reason why they are known as a real image but since now the image and the this image and the object they are on the opposite side thus 
This image, which is formed, is basically known as the virtual image. Obviously, this virtual image is straight and erect, isn't it? Because this is like this, and the image is also pointing like this. Now, this was inverted, this is erect, but the size of the object to the image, we can see that there is a like dimension they have reduced. So, dimensionally, we can say that this is diminished. So, these are some features where actually we could contrast these kind of things. Now, also one thing, the object was actually lying on the side where this C, this F were at. But there is no chance, no such chance for this kind of say like convex mirror such that the object lies between C and F. So this will be this point will be F this polygonal point, this will be F on the focus. So there is no chance for the object lie over here that it could stand beyond the center of curvature, it can lie between focus and the pole of the mirror. So there is no chance at all like this. Right? So the only chance it is possible for a convex mirror is either to stand at infinity or stand on any point on the principal axis. So, as it was discussed as being one of the limitation of a, like, a plane mirror while we are driving, this kind of thing could be used. Also, that the foot, which is actually, say for example, 10 meter wide, we do not need a mirror of 5 meter. The 10 meter width image is basically reduced to the small. So, this is the reason why whenever we see with the help of a rear view mirror placed in our car, we do see the size of those image of the cars or something in the background as small because they are diminished in size. Right? And if there was a case, like if this object was lying at infinity, then we would have drawn each and every incident line which is parallel to the principal axis. And it would have diverged as such. So it would seem to a viewer who is lying on this side that each and every reflected ray is coming from the focus. So any object that will lie at infinity, its image will be formed as virtual on this side. So it is virtual. That will be a point object at focus. The image will be formed at focus only. Right? So this is the scenario of where we have actually discovered that how we could fight with the limitations of a plane medium. In the subsequent lecture, we shall be discussing the ray diagrams for the concave medium, where obviously we will try to put this object at various other locations as well. Right? Thank you. Now, as in the previous lecture, as we have seen the cases for reflection in a convex medium, now we shall be focusing more steadily to the concave medium. Now, first of all, before we go, let us draw a table over here that under this particular column we shall be writing that the location of, say first of all, the image, right? And before that, the location of the object, that if an object is being placed, say for example, at the center of curvature, then where the image shall be formed. Now this 
The next thing will be that what is the type of this image which is formed, right? Now, what is the size of the image that is formed? And after that, we shall be seeing the orientation as well. The orientation means that whether the image form will be actually erect or it will be say like on the other side whether it is inverted or not. Now as in the first scenario we should be saying that say for example this one is a concave mirror the principal axis, the center of curvature over here, the focus at this particular point. If the object is being placed at infinity, then all the incident rays that will be coming will be actually parallel to this principal axis itself. So there will be a ray like this like this and they like this one and this one now it may be noted that within the entire story we shall be like treating this concave mirror with a very small approach right so if they are the incident rays then their reflected rays will actually pass through the focus as we have seen in the earlier case that why it shall pass through like this so each and every reflected ray will actually pass through the focus if obviously the aperture is less I repeat it once again we are going to see this entire scenario of the cases if and only if the aperture of this particular concave mirror is small in each and every scenario. Now, if the aperture is not small, then what will happen, which is obviously known as the defect of the spherical emanation, we shall be discussing in the subsequent lecture. But for now, we are treating this aperture as very really small. So we can see that all the reflected rays, they are basically meeting at focus and if they all are meeting at the focus, then obviously the image that will be formed on the focus. The object is on this side, the image is also on this side. So, if the object is at infinity, the image will be formed at simply on the focus, the time will be real the size will be, it will be a point sized on the focus itself. The orientation will be inverted. Right? Now, considering the second situation, when we will be treating that now this object shall remain between infinity to the center of curvature which means that actually now we can see the object itself right so the object which is between infinity and the center of curvature let us see it how, about how it looks like obviously again this will be a mirror of a small aperture this has been its principal axis. Obviously, there will be a center of curvature at this particular point, and an object is kept as such. Say, so like this, right? Now, first of all, let us draw an incident ray which will be parallel to the principal axis, which obviously will be passing through like this. And this molecular point is the focus, as we all know. So, 
So this will be the reflected ray. Another, incidentally, we will be passing it through the center of curvature, which will be hitting this mirror, and will be reflected back, pressing the path of the incident ray. So, another incident ray will be like this. The mirror being something like this. Where we could understand that this incident ray will be hitting and the reflected ray will actually be along the same path. Now, there are two reflected rays, if you also mind, this one and this one, they are actually meeting at this point. So obviously there will be an image that is being formed. If you could see clearly that this image is of smaller length as compared to this, then obviously we could mean that that the size of this is diminished. This is an inverted image being formed between the center of curvature and the focus. Obviously, the image is lying on the same side as that of the object. So, it could be formed on a screen. So, this is a real child image that is being formed, right? Now, considering the third situation, where obviously now, the object will be lying on the center of curvature itself. So, if this is, say for example, the concave medium with the principal axis like this, and there will be, say, a center of curvature and this like over here this is the object again an incident ray will be passing parallel to the principal axis such that it will actually be reflected like this along the focus. This point will be the focus. Now, let us draw another incident ray, which now is hitting the mirror, but passing through the focus this time. See, this one is a reflected ray passing through the focus, but now we are interested in drawing an incident ray, which will be passing through the focus itself. Right? Now, there is very important property which is known as the property of reversibility of light which obviously we shall be studying in deeper concepts while we will be studying about refraction. Now let me tell you in short break that if a say for an incident ray is coming parallel to the principal axis and it is passing through the focus then another incident ray which is Going back along like this, which means just it is tracing the reverse path, it is going through the focus, then at that point of time, the reflected ray now will be known like parallel to its principal axis. So, if this incident ray is passing through the focus, then the reflected ray will go parallel to this principal axis. So, the reflected ray will look like It will somewhat be looking like this. Right? Now this is the reflected ray. So over here we could see that this was the center of curvature. And it may be noted that actually these two reflected rays are meeting over at this point. And it will be seen that the image is formed again 
at the center of curvature but inverted but neither diminished nor enlarged it will be of the same size so if the object now happens to be at the center of curvature the image will again be at the center of curvature the tag will be real because as we could see that it is formed on the screen and the image and the object both are lying on the same side of the medium this will be of same size but the orientation as we could see that this is inverted one now let us come for the fourth scenario what does the fourth scenario say? The fourth scenario now obviously will give us a condition that this object will now lie between the center of curvature and the focus, right? So, if say for example, this is say, a mirror. This is the principal axis This is say the center of curvature And say for example this particular is the focus So if an object happens to lie Between the center of curvature and the focus, then let us first of all draw an incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis. The reflected ray will obviously pass through the focus, right? Now, over here, let us again pass our incident ray which is passing through the focus now. So, there will be another incident ray which will be basically passing through the focus. So, this incident ray will be reflected along like this. As we did see that any incident ray which is basically passing through the focus will be reflected uh, in a direction which is parallel to the principal axis. Now this is the point where actually the image will be formed. Now this image will again be an inverted one but look that the size has been enlarged now so if this happens if this is between c and f the image is formed between the infinity and the center of curvature now the time is basically real because it could be formed on a screen the size will be enlarged And orientation again it shall be inverted. The fifth circumstance is if this object now is being placed on the focus. This is obviously a very very interesting criteria for Concave lens. Let us see it how. If, say, for example, this one has a focus and this one has a center of curvature, and say, for example, an object is like this, first of all, this is the center of curvature and this is the focus. A line or an incident ray which is passing parallel to this principal axis, this will now pass through the focus. Like this, right? Now, let us keep another incident ray which 
it will actually seem that if this line was joined, it will mean that this incident ray will seem as if it was passing through the center of curvature and hitting like this. So the reflected ray for this particular will be along just the opposite direction. Right? Now, tell me one thing. Where are these two reflected rays going to be? Somewhere over here? Somewhere over there? Now it may be noted that geometrically, if you wish to find out, you will see that these two rays are basically parallel to each other. There is also another criteria that if you draw an incident ray like this which hits the pole, this will again be reflected like this. So, if an object is being placed over here, all these three reflected rays, they are basically parallel to each other and they are not going to meet anyway. And if they are not going to meet anywhere, we can say that the image is formed at infinity. Right? So, we can say that if the object now is being placed at the focus, then this image will be formed at infinity. The like type it will be formed real. Why? Because the image is formed on the same side as that of the object. Now the size will be very, very enlarged. Right? Now since it is forming at infinity, there is no question of getting the orientation as inverted or whether it is correct, right? Now look in this chart, there is a very very beautiful observation. If the object is at infinity, image is forming at the focus. But if the object is at focus, the image is forming at infinity. All are real, right? And if it is a point, a point object, then it is very, very enlarged, right? And if, say for example, in this scenario, the object is between I and C, the image is between C and F. Also, even now the object is between C and F, the image is formed between I and C, right? Now, over here, we can see that both are real, but over here it was diminished, but now it is enlarged, right? But it may be noted that all are inverted till now. All are real, right? As we will see in the scenario of a concave, of a, say, a convex medium, in that way, is there any possibility that a virtual image is being formed? Let us try to look at the last condition, right? So, the last condition will be the sixth one, if now the object is between focus and the pole, if it is lying between the focus and the pole now, let us see that this is the mirror and over here this is the principal axis. Obviously, there will be a focus somewhere over here, F, and there will be somewhere over here as C, the center of curvature. And an object is being placed somewhere between the focus and the same and the pole. This one, the pole. Now, let us try to make an incident ray which is parallel to this principal axis which obviously means that the reflected ray will pass through the focus. Right? Now, there would be another scenario that if we wish to draw another incident ray 
as such that if it is extended beyond over here, it will seem as if that it is passing through the center of curvature. So the reflected ray will just be on the other side. If we extend it, it will be like this. Now it will be noted that from this diagram that these two rays are actually diverging. So there is no question of them to actually converge at any position. These two reflected rays taken out converge now. Right? But if we keep a parcel over here, it will seem to him as if both the reflected rays, they are coming from a point or from the other side of the reader. So, let us try to exchange these lines on the other side. Okay, this is a reflected ray, this is the extension of this reflected ray. And the extension for this reflected ray, let us make it by black. This will be like this. So this black line is the extension for this reflected ray. Now also they are seems they actually seem to meet at this particular point, which obviously means that for a viewer or an observer who is actually seeing over from this, it will seem to him as if that this reflected rays are coming from a common point over here. So this particular head, this red arrow, arrow head, it will seem as if to this viewer that this red arrow head is over here, right? So, if the object is over between the F and the P, the image is formed beyond middle, as we could see in the scenario. The type will obviously be virtual because the object and the image, this object and the image, they are lying on the different ends of this medium. So, this one would be virtual. Yes, so this is in contrast similarly with the convex medium as we have seen. But try to understand now that this image is enlarged, which was never the case for a convex medium. As we did see in the previous lecture, that it was diminished so as to help us allow to see the cars which are coming from behind us in order to avoid any kind of accident. But this one is enlarged for concave mirror, and obviously the orientation will be in it. My goodness, each and every one, each and every object could be formed on screen, they were real, but this is virtual. What is the use of this? My goodness. Each and every one was alright, but this particular one is virtual. And we cannot use it even in our cars to see, because the cars which are coming from behind us, it will be enlarged much more. So we need a very, very big meeting. No utility of this. But this is basically utilized in various occasions in our daily life. Say for example, we are having a meter which we use it for the purpose of sharing. In that scenario, to avoid any kind of, say for example, accidents or hazards while we are sharing, 
we would like to see our face much more enlarged and the contrasting point is that we want our face to see as it is erect. We do not want to see it inverted. So, we are getting an erect image, we are getting an enlarged image, so that is the reason why we are utilizing this kind of thing of concave mirror in the utility or application of sharing mirrors. Contrast to the application of convex mirror which is used as a rear view mirror, right? So, for this particular reason, we hold the shaving glass much nearer to the face so that our face actually lies between the focus and this particular pole. Now, what will be the scenario if in that the actual aperture is much more bigger or in other case if this one they are actually much more curved then will it actually behave in this like way or not the first and foremost fact is that they all will actually abide by the laws of reflection but what will happen due to the defect which is known as spherical aberration? We shall be discussing it in the subsequent lectures. Right? Thank you. Now, as we did see in the previous lecture, the relationship between the like distance of the center of curvature from the pole and the focal length. Now, it will be our prime thing to understand that what is known as the mirror equation or the mirror formula but before going to the mirror equation first of all it may be noted that there are certain sign condition or sign convention that are followed in ray optics first of all what are they so now we will be discussing about the sign conventions that are used in ray optics. First of all, it may be noted that whenever we are going to draw the incident ray on any kind of mirror or any kind of lenses, say for example, we will draw it from left to right. Right? So, the first point is any incident ray. must be drawn or sketched from left to right which obviously means that if we are being given over this space to draw a ray diagram if the object is over here we shall place the medium somewhere over here and the rays will be passing or the incident rays will be passing from left to right. Right? Now, the second sign convention is that regarding the pole as we discuss that the point on the media which actually coincides with the principal axis is known as the pole so regarding that pole as origin anything which is taken on the right hand side may be taken as positive so on the right hand side this may be regarded as positive so likewise, anything that will be taken on the left hand side will be treated as negative. So I repeat it once again, just like as we draw in coordinate geometry with the origin over treated as a pole, 
Anything on the right hand side, we will face it as a positive on the x axis, and anything on the left hand side of the, of the pole, we will be treating it as negative, right? Anything on the right hand side that will be positive, and anything on the left hand side of the origin that will be negative. Likewise, on the right hand side, anything which will be taken on in terms of distance, it will be taken as positive, whereas on the left hand side, it will be treated as negative. Likewise, we do find there is another axis, the y-axis in coordinate geometry. So obviously, anything which we will be finding in the upward direction, we will be treating that as positive. Whereas, the things we will be finding on the downward direction, we will be treating those distances as negative. Right? Now to understand it, let us actually apply these things on a practical basis. Let us take a concave mirror like this, which obviously will have a very small aperture, right? And if it has, then obviously the principal axis will look like this. This particular point has to be the pole. And if this point is the pole, then we have to regard, this will be regarding, we have to regard this pole as the origin. Anything on right hand side to it will be positive, on left hand side negative, on upper side will be taken as positive, I don't know what time, lower side or downward, it will be treated as negative. So say for example, this particular thing has got a center over at this point. Right? And if this is the center, now let us actually keep an object over here like this. Now, there will be an incident ray which will be parallel to the principal axis, but obviously that incident ray must be drawn or sketched from left to right. Also, if we sketch an incident ray parallel to the principal axis, this will be coming from left to right. Then obviously the incident ray shall look like this, right? Now, the reflected ray will be passing like this, which obviously the point at the intersection with the principal axis, this will be the focus. Now we could actually sketch another incident ray which will pass through the center of curvature itself. And we know that any incident ray that is passing through the center of curvature that will actually and exactly retrace back its path. The reflected ray thus will be like this. Right? Now, over here, the confluence of these two reflected rays, we will be getting the image which is on the same side as that of the object. Thus, it is real but inverted and is diminished in size. Right? Now, let us give some names. Say, for example, this point as A, this point, say, as B and this point again as a dash and this point again as b dash and this point say as capital M. Now over here if we could actually look we will see that this triangle A, B, C and triangle A dash, B dash, C are actually similar to each other. 
because all the angles, this particular angle will be equal to this angle. Angle ACB will be equal to angle A dash C B dash. This angle, angle A, and this angle of angle A dash, they are 90 degrees. So it is but obvious that angle B will be equal to angle B dash. So we can state that triangle A, B, C, D and triangle A dash, B dash, C, they are actually similar triangles. Now, since they are similar triangles, we can say that their like sides, they are proportionately equal. The ratio of their sides will be equal. Now, over here we can say that this say A dash B dash divided by A B this side will simply be equal to A dash C divided by A C. Now it's very interesting to note that what we term this A dash C and A C, right? First of all, we have to understand with the help of this sign conventions that the PF is known as the focal point, right? So we will term this PF as equals to F, but they are on the left hand side of the pole, so we have to give it as minus F, right? Likewise, PC is simply known as small c or the radius, but again they are on the negative side, so we have to give it as minus c. Now, P A dash or simply A dash P. This is the distance of the image formation to the pole, so we can give it as, say, for example, V. Again, this is on the left hand side, we should give it as, say, minus V. And this AP is again on the left hand side, so we shall be terming it as U. Which means that the distance of this object from the pole, but since it is on the left hand side, we shall give it as negative by this property. Right? So over here, A dash C. A dash C is basically the distance of PC minus A dash P. Right? Isn't it? So this will be equals to P. C minus A dash P divided by the value of AC. The value of AC will be equal to AP minus PC. AP minus PC. And now let us look that what is the value of PC. The value of PC is minus C minus what is the value of A dash P? The value of A dash P is minus V. So minus along with minus they will be positive of this V. Divided by what is the value of AP? The value of AP is equal to minus U minus of PC. What is the value of PC? This is minus C. So this will be plus C. And let us give it as equation 1. Now, if you could well remember that if given this aperture is very small, which obviously means that this bulging is very small. At that point of time, we could regard this MP as like a straight line, a near to straight line, right? So, in that circumstances, we can treat this angle A dash A. PM as 90 degrees. And if it really happens, then observe 
this triangle A dash B dash F with the triangle F P M we will find that they are similar to each other just like it was the case for these two triangles. So we can state that triangle A dash B dash F and the triangle M P F are similar triangles. Now, with the property of similar triangles like this, we can again come up with A dash B dash divided by MP is equal to A dash F divided by this FP. Now what is A dash F? A dash F is basically A dash P minus FP. This is A dash P minus FP divided by now what is FP? FP is simply the PF that is equal to minus of F. Now what is the value of A dash P? The value of A dash P is equal to minus V minus the value of FP. The value of FP is equal to minus F. So the negative negative will cancel to give the positive of F divided by F. Right? Now one thing it may be noted that this MP, what is it? The MP is basically this length. If this aperture is considered to be very small, then it will treat, we will treat this MP as a straight line. Now, if this incident ray is parallel to this principal axis, then geometrically we can conclude that the value of AB will be simply equal to MP. The length of AB is equal to MP. So we can replace this MP as AB. And if we do so, then observe that these two particular equations They are having the left hand side as the same. This is a dash b dash divided by a b. This one is also a dash b dash divided by a b. So we can equate their right hand sides. So on equating their right hand sides, we will be getting the expression like this. 1 divided by u plus 1 divided by b is equal to 1 divided by f. Now, this expression we shall be getting when we will be solving the right hand side for these two equations and at a stage we have to divide them by UVF, multiplication of UVF. Then only we can get the equation of 1 divided by U plus 1 divided by V is equals to 1 divided by F. Now, this particular equation it also holds good for the convex mirror as well. As we did see that this equation is for the concave mirror, the same will apply for the convex mirror as well and you could try it out on your own, right? This particular equation is known as the famous mirror equation or the mirror formula. So, in this particular derivation of mirror equation or mirror formula, we did actually understood the importance of this first two. Right? This right and left, how we will be treating it. And obviously, in the subsequent lectures, we shall be trying to understand that how we could apply this upward and downward concept also when we will be studying about magnification. The magnification means that at that time we will be focused in understanding that by how much this image size is reduced to that of the object size, right?
Thank you. Now, as we have seen in the previous lecture, that how we could derive or deduce the mirror equation or formula. Now we shall be looking into a concept known as magnification, where obviously we will be abide by the sign conventions used in this ray optics, right? Now, say for example, if there is a concave mirror placed like this, Again, it may be noted that this concave mirror has got a very low aperture, which means that the aperture of this concave mirror is so low or so small that it could be regarded as like that this one, the bending is very less, which means that this mirror may be regarded as 90 degree to the principal axis, right? And now, obviously, if it happens, there will be a center of curvature at, say, this point C. Now, if we wish to put an object which is between infinity and the center of curvature, as we did see in the previous lectures, that say this one is the object and let us draw the incident rays now an incident ray that will be passing parallel to the principal axis and hitting the mirror obviously abiding by the laws of the sign convention this has to travel from left to right so the reflection or the reflecting ray shall pass somewhere like this and if it passes like this then this particular point will be known as the focus right now to come up with the other one let us say that an incident ray it falls from over here to this point then how will it basically look like let us see right so whatever the angle this will be making with this principal axis because at this point normal is the principal axis itself so making the same angle it will be reflected back Right? So we can regard this as the reflected ray. Now we can observe that this is the point of confluence between the two reflected rays. So obviously, an image would be formed at this point. Right? So, if we do wish to give the name of the points, this should be the pole P, this will be say for M, this will be say for A, this point as B the base, over here this one as B dash and this one point as A dash. Now, looking very carefully, one can actually see that if this angle is theta, this angle will also be equal to theta. So, in triangles, if we consider that triangle A, B, P and triangle A dash, B dash, P Look out that these two triangles, this bigger one and this smaller one on the downside, it will be having this angle same. Now, angle A, B, P is simply equal to angle A dash, B dash, P. Right? Because both are making an angle of pi by 2. Or in other words, they are like 90 degrees. Right? 
Now, obviously, if two angles are like corresponding, this angle is equal to this and this angle is equal to this, then obviously this particular angle, angle B dash A dash P, will simply be equal to angle B A P. So the triangles A B P and triangles A dash B dash P, they are actually similar triangles. So these two triangles are similar triangles. Now, from the concept of similar triangles, with the help of geometry, we can actually write it as A dash, B dash, the ratio of this side and this AB will simply be equal to this particular divided by the entire one. So this will be B dash P divided by BP. Now, what is A dash B dash? A dash B dash is basically the length or height of the image. Right? So we can actually write it as the height of the image denoted by HI, right? Divided by AB. AB is basically the height of the original object. So we can write it as HO. Now, well, if you could remember about the sign conventions that if actually the incident ray is coming from left to right, then obviously in that scenario the pole when considered as the origin then everything which is right hand side of this pole will be taken as positive and everything which is on the upward side of the pole will be taken as positive the other may be taken as negative so this particular distance from B dash to A dash, it is on the downward side from this P level, from this principal axis level, right? So, this A dash B dash, which is basically the height of the image, that must be clearly denoted as a negative, right? And Consequently, this AB is on the upper side, so that is the reason why this HO should be treated as positive. Now, this particular thing will give us equals to what is B dash P. See, B dash P is basically we have seen from the previous lecture, and B dash P is basically V, right? Which means the distance from the pole of the image formation but since it is on the left hand side right so this will be a negative sign divided by what is BP? BP is the point from the pole of the media where this object is being kept is simply as you now again if this is on the left hand side which means it will be a negative symbol before its now we could see that this negative sign and negative sign to cancel out each other leaving only V divided by U which obviously states that HI divided by H of the object is equal to minus V of divided by U we have shifted this negative sign over on this side. Now, magnification. What does it basically define us about? Magnification is defined as the ratio of the height of the image form to the height of the original object. So, according to the definition of, mag of magnification, we can say that this HI divided by HO is basically the magnification itself, right? So, we can actually state that the magnification is always equal to the negative of V divided 
by you. Now, as we did see in the previous lecture, that basically the mirror equation or the mirror formula, they were, were same for, say, like concave mirror as well as convex mirror. So, when you may try out for the magnification of the convex mirror as well, and we will be getting the same result, right? So, the magnification will be defined as the negative of the V, which means the distance from the pole the image is formed, divided by the distance of the object which is kept from the pole of the mirror, right? Now, ever and always it was said that yes, obviously, this aperture must be kept very low. This aperture shall be less for any kind of spherical mirror, which of example the concave mirror as well as the convex mirror. Now, when you may ask me that what is the meaning of that and why we are continuously saying that this aperture must be kept less. Now, if this aperture were not less, we would never have said that an angle of M. P, B would have been equal to 90 degrees because this is the curved line, it could never be possible. So, basically, a kind of mirror, or to be precise, the spherical mirror whose aperture is not less, then what will happen? Let us see. Say, so for example, This is a spherical mirror which obviously has no less aperture, right? So, if we draw a principal axis, then obviously this would have been the pole and likewise there must have been a center of curvature. Say for example, this is the center of curvature. Right? Now, if an incident ray is passing parallel to the principal axis, then what will happen? If a ray or say an example an incident ray is passing parallel to the principal axis this will actually be reflected like this and we did say that this was the point known as the focal point or the focus, right? Now, even and always, this point was known as focus only if the aperture is less. For a mirror of this much length, we can omit this parts, right? So, if we are observing only this small part fragment of this spherical mirror, it will seem as if that this is a straight line. The aperture is very less, right? So, what will happen then is that any ray of light which is actually passing near to the principal axis will be passing through a point which we did say as the focus. But if this incident ray, they start moving away from this principal axis, then what will happen? Obviously, they are parallel to the principal axis. Let us see how it will look like. This is an incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis. Now, what made this line or this ray to reflect the same principle will be applicable over here, right? 
which will abide by the laws of reflection. So at this particular point, it was the case that if we draw a radius or a line joining from the center of curvature at this particular point, this particular angle would have been equal to this particular angle. The same applies for over here as well. How? Let us see. Now let us draw the radius at this point from the center of curvature. So whatever the angle of incidence will be for this case, the same angle of refraction of say reflection will occur in this scenario. Where this particular angle is equal to this angle. Now please observe that even though this black incident ray is parallel to the principal axis green, it is not passing through the focus. Instead, it is passing through a point which is between focus and this pole. Right? Now, going again, if we draw another incident ray which is much more away from this principal axis so it will look something like this now let us draw again the normal at this point which obviously will be the line from the center of curvature right so whatever this angle will be for angle of incidence, the same angle of reflection shall be made. So this will actually come something like this. Now closely also that more you bring this incident ray which is parallel to the principal axis, the more you bring it closer to the principal axis, the more it has got the tendency to pass through focus. Or in other words, we may say that the more you try to move this incident ray away from the principal axis, which obviously will be parallel to the principal axis, the more tendency it will have to move away from the focus and towards the pole, right? The same would be the scenario when we will be drawing this kind of incident ray on the lower side as well, right? Now, this defect of shifting this reflected ray from the focus is basically known as spherical aberration. So this defect in particular is known as spherical aberration. Right? Now, we could see that we only will find a literal and imaginary focus. Why? Because we will find, we will tend to find an exact focus if and only if the aperture is becoming lesser. Then only this rays, this reflected rays will be shifting towards the focus. Right? Other or in other sense, the focus, as you see, it will seem as if they are getting changed for each and every reflected rays. 
Now, this red incident ray, the uppermost incident ray, and this black incident ray, they will also have their own reflected rays. This red one and this black one, they are basically meeting at this point. The second is that this black incident ray and this blue incident ray, they will again be meeting, their reflected ray will again be meeting at a point, so this point. So we can say for 1 and 2, for this and this, the reflected ray actually meets at this point. Right? And for this particular and this, the reflected ray meets at this point. So, joining them up for each and every reflected ray, we shall be getting a curve similar to this one. Similar to this black curve. Right? This could be actually be much more understood by a diagram. This is a concave mirror. Obviously, it is having an aperture which is higher. So, we will be getting this ray on joining this particular points, the reflection rays they are meeting right the adjacent reflection rays are meeting and we are finding their points and just we are drawing a curve over their found out points so we will get a curve like this on the upper end and also a curve like this on the lower end so these curves are basically known as caustic Or in other words, we could say that this black curve, what we have made, is known as caustic. So, as we did study that if an object is placed at a focus, which means that say for example, we have a concave mirror, we have kept a, say for example, a small bulb at the focus but obviously if that concave mirror has got a very less aperture then what would have happened? Then the incident rays would have gone like this and the reflected would have been parallel to the principal axis so thus there would have been a straight beam going out but in this case if this concave mirror is having a greater aperture then this will not be fitted. Why? Because over here you can see that the focus it seems to change for each and every this say incident rays, right? So for such lights that we use obviously we do keep a bulb at the focus of a concave mirror. But that is not a concave mirror exactly. This is exactly known as the paraboloid. The paraboloid is also you know, better known as the parabolic mirror, where this, say for example, this is the concave para, para, like a parablo, paraboloid, and this is say, the focus, this particular point. And this particular point, see, this would be the C or the center of curvature, right? But it may be noted that this is a paraboloid, which obviously will be following the equations of a like parabolic form. So it will not be having any center of curvature, right? So in this scenario, if we actually place a bulb over here, then what will happen is that any day that will be hitting the mirror, 
they will get reflected like this and we shall find that all the rays are basically parallel to the principal axis they all are parallel to the principal axis likewise if also we draw the scenario for Oh, in this case, we shall be finding them as like. So, we did understand that using a paraboloid, actually, we can get a focused beam, right? Because this focus beam, they all will be parallel to each other, all the reflected rays, they will be parallel to each other, and that is the reason why we use this kind of paraboloids or parabolic mirrors in the application of such lights. These paraboloids are basically the one who are actually meant to indicate the problems caused by for this kind of spherical aberration where the caustic are actually formed, right? And that is the reason why it was always true that during reflection of a spherical medium, we did consider that all these aperture are very, very less. The aperture very, very less, which means that this part is basically the magnified view of from over here to over here because they will seem as if they are straight they will be having a very less aperture right so understanding these concepts this is all for the reflection and in the subsequent lectures we shall be studying the much more interesting topics for this ray optics the refraction right thank you